When I first started talking to Waves about the Sheps Omni Channel, the idea was basically sort of defining the tools you'd always want on everything, finding a way to put them all on the screen at the same time, but also make it flexible enough that you're not sort of being forced into a workflow. And we really wanted to take what we felt was the best aspect of every methodology for mixing. So taking what was best about the analog console world, what was best about working 100% in the box. So the idea of having resources that imparted character and color to the signal that you would choose because of how they sounded, not just because of what they did, but also having this flexibility that you get only in the computer because no one is limiting you to a certain number of things. One of the things we wanted to be really careful of with this plugin was I wanted to make sure that every process in the plugin had some sort of character, and that can be an overused word, but I wanted it to have a sound because one of the things that I've seen in a lot of the previous channel strip plugins is they're about sort of a checklist of things that they have to have, but they don't necessarily sound like something. But then if you go too far in the direction of sounding like something, then you're really limiting what you can do with the plugin. So every single process has at least two or three choices as to the character that it's imparting. The first thing we needed to do was sort of define what the modules are. Well, the obvious ones would be the preamp, as well as filters, EQ. We obviously needed to have a compressor and we needed to have an expander, but really more of a gate, and then a de -esser. For each band of the EQ, you've got choices. So you can go fully parametric if you're trying to get rid of harsh cymbal noise and just pick your frequency, pick your bandwidth, and duck it out. But in that mid-range section, you also have two mid-range bands that have three options each. And it's different bandwidths, but it, more importantly, it's just different colors. So they're reminiscent of the EQs that you would use out in the analog world, but they are their own thing. And uh, we've tried to pick things that just sound really musical. They're useful on anything, but um, as we listened, all of my testing was done on musical sources because that's what I do. And um, I think it gives you a really wide palette of EQ, but also to be able to mix and match per band is something that you don't necessarily do. Because if you're working with, let's say, emulated hardware plugins and you open up an EVQ, you're not going to think, well, mid-range would be better on an API, so I'll leave that out and open up an API or something like that. This gives you the ability to do that. One of the audio processes that has the biggest number of choices, both in the analog world and in the digital world, certainly, is compression. Dynamics processing in general, but compressors, I mean, I make my living with compressors. How could we make a compressor that I would want to use on everything? I think we've actually achieved it. We've got three very, very different compressors, all built in a module with a consistent control set, with consistent levels and makeup gain, so you can actually switch between the three types of compressors without having to completely reset everything. If you dial in the compressor on your kick drum and you just want to hear what B sounds like instead of A, you hit that button and you'll have almost the exact same level coming out, but with a totally different character coming out of this compressor. We made sure that all three of the compressors work on any kind of material, and then it really starts to become about your taste. Within the dynamics, we needed a de -esser. But one of the things that I've always wanted to do is expand the idea of de into the entire frequency range. And so what you get are two de circuits, but they're full frequency range. So you can decide to focus in the low mids, you can focus in the sub, you can focus in the mid range, you can focus in the air, and you can have either band be at any frequency you want. Plus you have lots of different filter types. So for instance, you can use a wider band down in the low mids to try and handle the boom of an acoustic guitar while having a notch filter up in the upper mids to take care of some of the pick noise on the strings without touching the air of the acoustic guitar. We've called it the DS squared. So it's, it's a really amazing module and it's one that we've spent quite a bit of time on and I think it's pretty exciting.
there is a preamp section with three totally different types of distortion, harmonic distortion built in. And again, it's not purely level dependent. You don't have to crank your level into this. As you bring up the preamp knob, you will get the color as long as you're anywhere within a workable range, which is really, really useful. I think what this can end up doing is you'll start to know the characters of things and you'll start to have your favorites, but it will also allow you to very quickly try out other things. You'll get a completely different sound because everything will start to react a little bit differently, but you do it in a way where it's always under control and you don't feel like, well, if I hit that button, it's all going to go away and I've got to start over. There's also a movable insert point. So you have a channel strip that we think might give you all the tools you need, but when you need one more EQ or one more compressor, or you actually just want to put in a process that isn't available inside the channel strip, you can put it anywhere in the signal channel. Chain. You can reorder the modules in any order you want. So it isn't just a pre post EQ for the dynamics. Anything can go before or after anything else. Another thing that I haven't seen anywhere else is the idea of MS processing within the channel strip, but you choose where you want to go into MS mode and where you want to exit. So you can go through the preamp and the EQ straight stereo mode, then go to MS for your dynamics processing, then come back out and be back in stereo mode to exit the channel strip. So it's incredibly flexible how you do that. Just work. Open up the plugin, start from the factory reset, and say I'm going to start EQing. And not think about the character of the EQ, go with the factory default if you want. But then as soon as you've got an EQ that you kind of like, you can now go down the path of saying, okay, let me check out the different characters here. And we've been very careful that when you change the character of the compressor or of an EQ band or of the preamp, you don't immediately change your gain structure and things don't change drastically. So you get the benefit of this new color, but all within the context that you've set up. So the channel strip works in every combination of every control in a way that means you don't have to think about all the controls at once. So you have enough choices inside this plugin that it should work on anything in any genre and get you what you're looking for.